Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about everyday things, things that just make adulting a little bit easier, a little bit more enjoyable, and a little bit more fun. Today I want to talk about five apps that are pretty much a game changer in your everyday life. Whether you're at work, you're in school, or just honestly everyday things, if you use a computer, these are essentially apps you need. And these are gonna be Mac specific because I am an Apple person, I'm a Mac person, and that's what I know. But these apps are honestly productivity monsters. Like they're just gonna help your workflow and what you do. Simple tasks, they're just gonna make so much better, so much easier. And a little bit of an update for those of you that have been following the channel from the beginning, you may have already noticed, but the quality is a lot better. And that is because I bought a new camera. So I'm no longer filming these videos off of the front camera of my iPhone. We have moved up in the world, people. First revolutionary app is called Clippy and everyone, absolutely everyone needs it. I've been using it for four years. I wish I've been using it my entire life. I unfortunately did not know about it when I was a student, but oh boy, do I wish I did. So. What it is, is it basically saves what you copy so you can paste it later when you need it. So it's like a copy history. It's incredible. This is the one app that is so ingrained in my workflow that when I borrow someone else's computer, whether it was at work or just a friend's, whatever it is, I notice in like 30 seconds that they don't have it because I'm like doing the commands and it doesn't work because they don't have the app. And I'm always like, you need to download Clippy before I leave this place because it is going to change your world. It is going to rock your world. And let me show you. First, the app, it looks like this. It's this blue one, Clippy. It is not the Clippy paperclip thing from Microsoft back in the day. It's this. And so how you use it is let's say you have a big chunk of text that you want to copy. I'm using O Canada. Yes. You know, copy. And then you want to go paste it, but then you realize Oh wait, I need the date first. So you copy the date and I know the keyboard shortcuts. So I apologize because that mouse clicking was absolutely painful for me. But then you have this document. And so you want to paste the date because that was the first thing. So you can just do your right click, paste as usual. But you don't actually want to go all the way back and copy the O Canada again. You could, but you don't need to. So I've set the command, and you do need a keyboard command to essentially activate Clippy, but I've set the command as Command Shift M. And so when I press Command Shift M, it brings up this little box and it shows me, I cleared my history, so there's only 10 right now, but it shows me everything, the last 10 things essentially that I've copied. So you can just go to O Canada and if you hover over it, you can see it gives you like a little preview of what it is in case it is longer. And then you would just click on it to essentially paste it. It's incredible. And there is this little clipboard in your taskbar, menu bar, where you can like open the preferences and you can set different things. So. You can set, for example, how many items you want it to save. I think it's up to a hundred. So you can honestly, if you want it to save a hundred things you've ever copied, it'll save all 100 things that you can always access. I personally leave it at 30. I think it's just a safety thing. Like, I don't know what I'm copying. I don't need, like chances are I'm not going to need something that I copied, I don't know, a hundred things ago. But yeah, so you can play around with that. You can also play around with the... Um, the commands for it. So again, I said mine was command shift M. That is because if you know the keyboard shortcuts, command C to copy and then command V to paste, that stays the same. The default I'm pretty sure that Clippy suggests is command shift V. If you know your keyboard shortcuts, command shift V is plain text pasting. And so that can be for anything. Like if you go and highlight a document with bolding and italicized letters, you can copy that. And then by doing command shift V in a new document or wherever you wanna paste it, command shift V 
instead of just command V is going to paste all of your text, but without the bold and without the italic. So it's basically pasting plain text. So I still use that command in like day-to-day -day things. And sometimes it was just something really quickly I wanted to do. I didn't actually want to trigger Clippy every single time because I knew it was the last thing I copied. So anyways, I set Clippy, long story short, to command shift M to activate just so that I could have all three options, keyboard shortcuts. You can mess around with it. You can set it to whatever's gonna work best for your workflow. This next app is basically the reminders app on like an energy drink. It is an app that I use on every single one of my devices multiple times a day and I'm not even kidding. It is a reminder app, it is a habit tracker, and it is a calendar all in one. Everything in one place, it is, the best thing. I love it oh so much. So you can see it in my doc. It's called Tick Tick. There is, for this one, there is a free, like a light version of the app that you can download, um, or you can pay for the premium, which is like unlocks all the features. So I do have the premium one. I tested it out with the free trial or with the free, the light version for a while and I was just work I was just using it so much that it made sense for me to do the yearly subscription I think it is um, but up to you you can play around with it also sorry notifications I am one of those people I always run my notifications to zero so I am just gonna get rid of this so that it doesn't bother me every time I look at my desktop so tick tick this is it you open it up and so yeah, you have all these different views. This is my today view. So today I had a reminder, I have to put in my good food order or I have to remember to cancel it for next week. And then all the habits and these are the habits I have left today. And please, this is a no judgment zone. Everyone's habits are different, but these are the habits that I still have left that I would like to complete today. And then when I do it, I basically just check it off. Um, and you can also, you can create all these different lists, whether it's a shopping list, whether it's, again, just a reminder list. Like I have one for all my bills and I have like, it'll send me a notification when a bill is due. You can have all these lists. I also have one for TV shows. And you can set it so that there's a due date. You can flag it. You can add a description, tasks underneath it. There's just so much you can do. And then when I've done it, I'll check it off. So Squid Game, yes, I've watched it. It's awesome. Let me know if you've watched it. And then the habits, I'm pretty sure this is what convinced me to get the pro version because I do think with the free version, you only have a certain number of habits. And so yeah, so I paid for it because I use these habits all the time. Okay, these were not all loaded at the same time. So some of them I'm doing really well, <laughs> some of them I'm not, but they're not all equal. If you go to the calendar, you have the day, week, month, your reminders show up here if you want. You can have your habits show up here if you want. I thought that was way too cluttered of a calendar view. So I prefer to leave my habits in the today view and then I just check it off. Again, there's also a little thing in the menu bar. You can quickly add a task. I can check off tasks as I go along. So super easy. Everything is in one place. That is really, it's the convenience for me. I had a different app for tracking my habits. I have a different app for reminders. I had a different app for my calendar. This just centralizes and localizes everything. And it's just the little things that end up saving time. The other thing I will mention, this is not a feature I use, but I know this is an incredibly popular feature for students primarily, is a Pomodoro timer. So if you're like time blocking your calendars or your tasks, you can also have a Pomodoro timer going as you complete your tasks. Third app is called Alfred and more specifically, Alfred 4. All three apps so far have been free. Tick Tick, as I mentioned, does have the premium version. Alfred, I do not pay for. I use the free version for this one. There are extra features that you can pay for if you want. This is basically like Spotlight. So if you're a Mac user, you probably know the command spacebar brings up the Spotlight search. I still use the Spotlight search for some things and Alfred does everything Spotlight does and more, but for some reason I still use both. I have no idea why. So for me, my command for 
Alfred is option space bar. I will be honest, I have not even nearly gone through, I would say, the majority of the features of Alfred. I've like figured out the five or six, maybe seven things that I use it for religiously and I just kind of stay in that sweet spot. The main things I use it for, which is primarily defining words. So you can like click define and then type whatever the word is and it'll come up. You know, it'll show you all these options. You can bring up like, like apps, you can search for files, you can do a calculator, like all this kind of stuff. Again, it is, it does basically everything Spotlight does, but it does even more. You can even search for like Canon and you can right away click. And again, if you're good with your keyboard, you know your shortcuts, you can just easily go through these to get to like Amazon, Wikipedia, whatever it is. So this is added functionality that Spotlight search doesn't do as easily or just doesn't do at all. And then <laughs> the big thing I use it for, <laughs> this is lazy productivity at its best. But when I'm done for the day, there's nothing more satisfying than literally just typing in sleep, enter, and everything goes dark, and I'm done for the day, and it's just so satisfying to like hit that return key to put everything to sleep. It feels like if this was a command center, and it just sometimes feels like after a long day, it's like the red button you shouldn't touch, but in this case, it's the red button that you do touch, and it just everything kills everything and it's, it's great. Fourth app, it is called Magnet. It is not free. <laughs> I have been using this app for years though, and I tried to do a quick little Google research to find out for all of you how much it costs, and I got a lot of different quotes. So I have saw everything from like $2 all the way up to $10. So unfortunately for this one, I cannot tell you how much it actually is. I went to the app store and since I already have it, like I couldn't see the price and then Google didn't really help. So anywhere from two to $10. I am someone, I use multiple desktops. I have multiple monitors. I just have a lot going on. If you have multiple things, you want to set them up on half your screen and you don't want to have to mess around with like resizing everything, you can just click magnets up here and you can tell it where you want it to go. And then this one, again, you can just say, no, actually I want it at the bottom. You can just do so many things. You can maximize it. And again, you'll see on the right hand side here, there are all the keyboard shortcuts. So once you get good with them, you can just, it's magic. It's literally magic. And you don't, yeah, you don't have to fuss around with resizing everything to exactly how it is. And if you're OCD like me, it has to be perfect. So no, this just does it for me. You can even send things to like different displays. So if I'm looking at something on my main monitor, but I wanna send it over to my second monitor, it's just everything in one. It's perfect, it's beautiful, it's magic. This last one is a big one. It is like the productivity app of all productivity apps, and that is Notion. There is an iPhone app, there's an iPad app. You can just go on the website. You don't like actually need to download the Mac OS app. You can do everything. It's a notes app, it's an Excel, it's a Salesforce, like it's a database. It's honestly, it's a to-do list, it's an agenda. It's absolutely everything in one. This is not gonna be a tutorial because how to use Notion and how I use Notion can honestly be, it's own video in and of itself. And if you would like to see that, let me know in the comments down below. Some tech companies are using Notion as their everything because it can replace like Trello boards, if you know what those are, Google Docs, it can replace Excel, it can replace Salesforce, it can just replace absolutely so much. That being said, there is a pretty huge learning curve to Notion because there are so many capabilities, like because it can do so much and so many different things, it takes a long time to get comfortable with it. That's also why I'm not doing a tutorial today because there's so much I could go over. However, 
Just some really quick things. So here's like a weekly agenda. I will just say this is not my weekly agenda. They have a whole library of Notion templates. This is kind of like a Trello board. So you can check stuff off. You can, if you realize, oh, this email, you know what, I wanna do it on Wednesday. You can just easily slide it over. When you are done with something, if you wanna just get rid of it, you can add it to the archive and then it just disappears. But you can always go to the archive and find it later. Like honestly, that's just one example. And and you can even have like a finance tracker. So again, this is one of the templates. So this is like a spreadsheet sort of sheet that you can do with Notion. You can color coordinate things. Gotta love organization and color coordination. So, so much stuff you can do. You can filter it by different views. Anyways, we're not gonna get into that. One of my most prized possessions on Notion is this book log I created. This I did take from Ali Abdal. He had a template of his own on Notion that I downloaded and I kind of remixed it, just changed it a little bit to my own liking, to my own style and what I wanted to track. This is just another thing that I've done that I use Notion for. Really easy to like create a new page. You can just click a plus button on something if you want it like embedded. You can add a title, so test. You can customize it, you can add an icon, you can add a picture, oops. You can add a cover photo. And you can change all of these. You can add your own, you can use their gallery, whatever it is. You can save certain pages as templates. So like if you are using the weekly agenda and you want it to have the same format every single week, you're just changing like the individual items, you can create a template so that every week all you have to click is on the template. It automatically loads it for you. And then you just enter in the few little minute details. So if you just want to start typing, you can just start typing and it's a normal like Word document. Honestly, it's awesome. You can share it, comment if you are working on it with like other people, all this kind of stuff. So Notion is free if you're an individual and like there are some parameters that you have to be within. I do not pay for Notion. So for my use, it is very much free. It's just, it's everything. I am all about consolidating 10 apps into one. And so for me, I can use this for notes. I can use this for an agenda, my book tracker, my finance tracker, my journal. I can honestly just use this for everything. I highly, highly recommend you look into it. Again though, the word of caution, there is a huge learning curve because there's just so much you can do. Once you get it, you get it and it is incredibly easy and Notion, God bless them, does have a ton of YouTube videos and a ton of tutorials themselves on how to use Notion and they're always launching new features and it just makes it even better and better and better and better. Just be prepared that it is not something that you can expect to know in like a day. Start with one thing, I would say get comfortable with that before you expand into other areas of Notion. I recommend starting from some of the templates. It just saves you a bunch of time, makes things a little bit easier. So that's Notion in a nutshell. All right, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if this was useful, if you would like to see more productivity apps, because honestly narrowing this down to just five was a little bit hard. So if you want to see another one with new apps, just let me know in the comments below. Have a great day. Bye.